Hey everyone, in this video we'll cover the process of producing a DTF job using Digital Factory Direct to Film Edition. In this process, we'll cover verifying your settings, setting up your ink order, checking rasterization, performing a test print, and printing the job. CadLink's Direct to Film Edition allows you to prepare your job, manage color, and automate your production with built in tools. In this video, we are assuming you have your printer installed. If not, Check out the video on how to install and set up your printer in Digital Factory Direct to Film Edition. If your printer has sat inactive for a period of time, it's suggested that you perform a nozzle check with your printer's utilities. This way you can rule out any hardware issues if you have problems when printing. Once you confirm your printer is functioning properly, your next step before printing is to verify your printer setup, such as ensuring you set the proper printer port, paper selection, page layout, and paper source. You can check the printer port by going to the Q menu and selecting Manage Queues. In the dialog that opens, you'll find the name of the queue that you'll be using along with your installed printer. In the third column, you can see the port the printer is using and whether it is a USB connection or an IP address on the network. After closing the queue manager, you can check the other settings of the queue that you're using. The common settings for the queue are found in the queue tab found in the bottom right when the active queue is selected. Confirm you have the correct print mode selected for the job as well as the correct paper type, layout, and paper source. After you've established these settings are correct, check the ink order of your printer. This will vary depending on the printer you are using. With the queue selected, go to the queue menu and select Set Ink Order. This dialog shows the ink cartridges your printer has in the order in which they are installed. It's important to ensure the order matches the physical ink cartridge so the printer uses the correct ink color when printing the job. If the order is incorrect, the result will be an unusable product. This feature is designed to work specifically with Epson-based printers and won't work with other imported controller-based machines. Once you've completed the preliminary setup, go to the Devices menu and select Quick Print Test found at the bottom. This generates a color chart used by Catlink to check ink order. There are labeled swatches allowing you to quickly see if there's an issue with ink order. If the swatch is labeled yellow but you see another color, your ink cartridges are in the wrong order. With the Catlink test page selected in the queue, click on the print icon above. If the output demonstrates that your inks are in the correct order, you can move to the next step to ensure your profile is producing colors to your specifications. Go to the device menu again, and this time click on Print Test Page. A dialog will open with a list of images. Find the file labeled Profile Test Chart, select it, and click OK. Once again, select the job in the queue and click on the print icon. This printout contains photographs and gradients to check color accuracy. If the test print meets your desired quality level, then you can move ahead with your print jobs. If there are issues with colors, there are a few places you can make quick adjustments without getting too deep into color management settings. With the job selected in the queue, look to the lower right. There are three tabs. To adjust the settings for all jobs coming into the queue, click on the queue tab, then click on the color adjust button. This opens the easy color adjustments dialog. This dialog will have three tabs, color adjust, processing options, and ink removal. Color adjust values are set according to the ICC profile that you are currently using. Here you can increase or decrease the amount of CMYK used in the job, reduce the total amount of ink used, increase or decrease the brightness, or increase the saturation. You have the option of selecting photo, which is tweaked for better results when printing photos, giving better skin tones, but you can lose vibrancy in the overall image. The graphic option will make the image pop a little more, but can have a negative effect on gradients and skin tones. In the photo mode, you have the ability to merge photo values with graphic values, allowing you to have a little bit more control over the image. To learn more about the color adjustment settings, please watch our video, How to Make Simple Color Adjustments in Digital Factory. The Processing tab gives you control of a number of underbase options, such as max white ink, choke, and white under black values. These can be more closely explored through our three existing videos. How to print the right amount of white with the set maximum white ink feature, Fix too much white ink showing by setting the white underbase choke from the rip, and prevent fading and cracking on DTG and DTF with the white under black wizard. The last tab is ink removal when using rasterized images. Here you can set the hole size, including in areas of partial transparency. Ink limiting can also be controlled in the queue properties. Close the current dialog and double click on the tab of your queue. This brings up the queue properties dialog. Click on the Color Layer section on the left column. Now, click on the Ink Removal option found at the bottom of the Color Layer options. 
Click Enable in the area on the right and you will now be able to affect the frequency, angle, and shape of the dots in the rasterized image. Here, you can also change the hole size as you did in the previous Easy Color Adjust dialog. Digital Factory often includes raster print modes that already have ink removal enabled. After you've made any adjustments and verified the test print, you're now ready to print your own job. Load the job into the queue by either clicking on the Open Job button in the smart bar at the top and navigating to your file, or right-click in the queue and select Import File. Once the job is loaded, you can preview it on the right. You can change the preview background with the color of the substrate you're printing on. Go to the Set Substrate Color button at the top of the preview window on the right. Select the color of your shirt. I'm printing this job onto a black shirt, so I'll change the substrate color to black. This will give me a better idea of how the design will look on the black shirt. This option does not affect the actual output and is only a visual representation. You can see another form of preview by right-clicking on the job in the queue and selecting RIP only. Once completed, right-click again and select View Raw Data. The first time you select View Raw Data, you'll have a dialog stating that this is only a representation of the output, and the colors displayed may not accurately reflect how they will look when printed. This preview is meant to show you a representation of each ink color printed. To learn more about this feature, please watch the video on using the View Raw Data feature to preview your print layers. Finally, to print your job, click on the print icon in the smart bar above or right click on the job in the queue and select print. If you are not happy with the output, return to the dialogs shown earlier in this video to make more adjustments. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you, hit the like button. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at any time.